Hey everyone, this is Disc Junkie, and today I'm back to review Back to the Future, the limited edition Deluxe DeLorean box set, or what you want to call it. Now, this is a Swedish release, but I know that it was also released in Germany and in the UK, or at least it was planned in the UK. Uh, I can't remember, it might have gotten recalled, I remember there were a lot of issues with the DeLorean uh, model which was supposed to be included. Basically, there was some trouble with the manufacturer, so was recalled, and then, then it was back on, and then it was recalled, and it was back on. I can't remember now which countries got it and which countries didn't, but Sweden did get this box set, and um, we got this uh, quite a quite a large cardboard box. Now, one thing that I don't like is the fact that they have this uh, protective cardboard thing inside, which you know you can see it through the window, and you know just displaying the box like it looks a bit weird. But you can take this out, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, first we can just take a look around the box to see what it looks like. And overall I think this is, you know, it's got a pretty nice artwork to it. Uh, as you can tell, they've sort of tried to do a 3D kind of thing. So you got the back of the car here, side, front, and well there should be the bottom of the car here, but here it's just, it's just black. Uh, and then you obviously have the miniature car from that side. So that's sort of an interesting uh, idea. and. Uh, yeah, I think it works pretty well. Makes for a unique and a sort of versatile artwork. Now here we have the top, which could have shown the top of the car, but instead they have a shot that looks like this. Quite a nice shot. I mean, I like the like the overall look of this. There's not much of a logo or a title. You just have this small title here, but apart from that, you know, it's all pictures of the car, basically. But there was, in fact, this paper flyer, which was just you know, stuck to the bottom part with uh, some of that uh, EC to remove adhesive glue thing. Uh, the glue did actually rip the small part of the paper when I tried to take it off, but it didn't leave any marks on the actual box, so that's pretty good. Here is that typical sort of overview shot, showing you what's in the box and listing all the features for each disc and whatnot. Interestingly enough to note about this box set, according to the back cover here, uh, we have triple Blu-ray pack, DeLorean replica model, certificate of authenticity, and sticker sheet. Now, the certificate and the sticker sheet are not included. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but this was some info that came out late from the manufacturer uh, Universal, and so far I haven't really gotten an answer about as to why these items were not presented, but they were not included on any of these Swedish copies. So, uh, uh, just tough luck. I don't know if other countries got these two items in their boxes. But uh, no point dwelling on it, so let's just move on. Now, uh, the box itself, uh, it's quite a tight fit, and as you can tell, you know, it is a bit bent and dented in places, basically from being a little bit too full. As you can tell, you got some crease marks, and uh, I mean, I don't mind. Overall, it's, it's a really good quality and quite a nice box. And then you have the uh, blue air box set, which is sitting in its own separate little shelf thing here. So you can easily access this, which I think is nice. You don't have to take out the entire car and whatnot. It's quite a tight fit, so it can be a bit hard to get out. I would suggest attempting to take out this whole separate cardboard sleeve for the blue ray box set, because if you do that, the whole car part will come out more easily. Now, just a quick look at the box, the way it looks when it's empty, as you can tell. Not very special, just plain cardboard box. Then we get to the car. First of all, we have this protective part, which just comes right off. Now, this piece... I have a problem with this piece for one simple reason. I'm going to put this back on, just to show you why this is... For one thing, this is here, so the car, car won't bounce around, of course. Uh, but notice this little hole here, there are some minor flaps, and you're wondering like, okay, why are there flaps there? Well, from this angle, you'll notice that the hole is pretty much straight above where the antenna on the car would be, if you were thinking about the uh, whole scene where they're trying to get back to the future, and they got this hook on the thing, and lightning is striking, and yeah, you've seen the movie, you know. So, basically, that's where the hole is, and you're like, okay, so was there supposed to be an antenna on here? Well, to be honest, the thing that's supposed to be on here is this. Now, this is a very, very small part, uh, and I, I'm not entirely sure how accurate this is to the uh, car in the movie, but this is just an extremely small part, and the reason they made this hole is so that this little thing, you know, wouldn't hit the ceiling, and 
this is so fucking stupid. I mean, any fucking monkey with a wrench can figure out that, you know, having this hole only makes things worse. And I don't think that anyone received this box with the small, you know, whatever it is intact. It's just an idiotic thing. I mean, you can glue it back on if you want to. It's probably not that hard. I haven't done so yet, and, you know, it is a small detail. Even when it's broken, you know, you can put it on a shelf, I doubt people would even notice that it's missing. I don't think I even saw it in the beginning, then I just heard something rattling around and took it out and was like, okay, where's this little Thor hammer thing fitting into the movie? Moving along, I'm just gonna take this small model out. As you can see here, you actually have two plexiglass rods holding the car. You know, it looks... It's, I think it's the closest thing you can get to actually having a car that hovers. Which, you know, I don't think they could have done, because, you know, it's probably pretty expensive. Overall, I do like the detail of the car. You got the wheels in the sort of flying position. Uh, they're not movable, and the entire car is fixed, you know. So you can't open the doors, can't, you know, move stuff around. Everything's just, just the way it is, and, uh... I like the paint job, I think it's a very nice quality, you know, a lot of little intricate details and um, it feels like quite a nicely done replica and uh, it is basically what, what I hoped it would be, uh, no more no less. Big plus, I want to say, for the whole base here, because the base is really, really heavy. The car itself is, I don't think that weighs particularly much, but the base is just loaded with uh, some kind of weight. Uh, you got copyright here, 2010 Universal Studios, all rights reserved, and I mean, if you put it down like this, I mean, it will sit on the shelf very nicely and I mean I can just do this and you can hear that it is a, it's a heavy box it's even you know like my lamps are shaking when I you know drop this bad boy down so uh, yeah uh, I'm just gonna move on and take a look at the blu-ray trilogy pack comes out quite easily first up we get you know it's a really nicely designed sleeve it's got a matte printing some glossy finish for Michael J Fox here and for the logo which is also slightly embossed by the way rainbowish style yeah you can see what it looks like then we got a slight glossy finish for the car and the whole fire trails here so I mean I think it looks good it has a couple of rating marks here but it doesn't really stand out like the UK rating logos do or at least I don't think so I think these are you know, pretty small. Now we can just check the side there, get a nice little shimmery effect on the logo, and turn it to the back. We got the matte printing, then up here we also got matte printing, shot of the car, and as usual, then we got all the listings of the specs and stuff. Now there is the spine on the digi pack, just to show you that before we open it up. So just slide it out, and here we can just start. I'm just gonna fold this out to show you. To begin with, I'm actually gonna show you the discs and First up, we got disc one. Now these are all Blu-ray discs, as you can tell from the giant Blu-ray logo. And as you can tell, each of them features a shot of Michael J. Fox, sort of in the style that he's in in each movie. So I think it's very nice. And last but not least, we got disc three. And there's a close-up of that. Now also in the box here, we got a small booklet. Now, like I mentioned, there was supposed to be a sticker sheet in here, but there's nothing like that. And this is basically everything we get. And uh, well, it's hardly a booklet at all. It's basically just two page fold out and you know it doesn't really have anything it's basically just a listing of the extras and the content so that's pretty much it uh, you know I don't know how important it is nice to have something but yeah I wish the certificate and stuff would have been in here because it you know it would have made the whole set feel just a bit more luxurious but anyway let's move on to the interior shot here and here you can tell from left to right we got Marty in the different sort of outfits from each movie these are obviously the same as the discs, so even if you put the disc on, it will sort of match the artwork, which is also a nice thing. I can mention that just looking at these three pictures, which I think you can tell, uh, the first two are quite high quality, but looking at the third one, you can probably tell this is quite, quite grainy, at least the shot of Mari is quite grainy. Looking at the background, with like the little figures here, and the sort of scenes going in the background, at the top bar thing, uh, you know, those are all pretty equal in quality, but the shot of Mari on the right here, that is, uh, that is quite grainy and, you know, doesn't really match up to the two shots from the first two films. But, uh, you know, don't really consider it a major flaw. I mean, it, it looks alright, and uh, overall I think it's, it works. Now, let's take a look at the other side, which is also... I don't know what to say, it's... Uh, it, it's not all I hoped for. Uh, as you can tell here, first we got a shot of the car just from the back, which 
looks pretty decent, but then things start to get really weird. I mean, it's just a very odd mix and match of different shots from each movie. And, I mean, let's just go back again and take a look at this. So first we got the back of the car speeding down the highway. Okay. Then in the background of that we got the whole western scenario from the third movie. And there we got that annoying Clara character. Then suddenly we got the thugs from the second movie sort of riding their hoverboards. Uh, in the middle of the desert, which makes no sense at all, just looks weird. Then we got the car also like sort of skidding from the same fire marks like the car in the beginning and then we got Lorraine sitting on the top of the car which she doesn't do in any movie and she feels sort of very pasted in. If you actually look closely at the windshield you can actually see uh, the reflection of Doc and he is standing there to the side but windshield is just extremely white and then the car becomes very sort of faded down and shadowed uh, I don't I mean the whole thing doesn't make a whole lot of sense I mean you got two cars just beside each other and then you got sort of you know this shot where Doc is reflected in the windshield so that would make him standing beside this car but straightly behind him you got the shot of the car flying off I mean, I don't know. I mean, I look at this and to me it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It just, be, I mean, it's not a bad, it's a good job in terms of the quality, you know, technically it's a good picture. It's put together, it doesn't have, you know, bad image quality and stuff like that, but it's just a, it's just a fucking clusterfuck of a picture. I mean, nothing makes sense, it just looks mashed up like someone hit the random button and threw in everything that had to do with the movie uh, I don't know what to say you you be the judge but to me it's just I don't know it's just some very odd strange choices to me I, I mean I like it and I wouldn't uh, you know it's a cool box I'm glad I got it but looking at it from a reviewing perspective it's far from perfect and uh, it's got some flaws and um, yeah, I can understand what, why there was so much trouble with releasing it, because, uh, yeah, it, it's just a flawed set, and definitely not all it's hyped up to be. As you can tell, I've now taken the paper thing out of the box, this sort of cardboard support thing, and then the whole thing looks a lot better. Now you don't have that whole whiteboard thing up here, so, you know, it, it looks good from a display point of view, and, uh, yeah. But that's it. Really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all next time.